Well, as we welcome you to the unofficial start of summer, ho ho, do we have a fun one for you today. Welcome to the weekend. Karski and Zinski here with you and joined very shortly by our special guest, Matt McCarthy, to take us into our epic food face-off. I am excited for it. Nick, not so much. Why is that? Huh. You, you you look intimidated, scared, nervous, or all of the above. Mm, just just all of it. Just not feeling too comfortable with I don't know all the food that we're going to consume <laughs> in a short amount of time. Oh yeah, me neither. I'm concerned. I'm worried. I I'm already feeling sick, and it's uh, it's not a good feeling. Not a yeah. good feeling. Sorry to no. uh, start the show this way, but that's how we're doing today. That's how we are feeling. Those are the emotions that I have at this time. So uh, for those of you who don't know, and if you've been listening to the show long enough, you'll know that uh, Nick and I hosted a radio show 10 years ago at Ithaca College uh, where our name and such is derived from. And this little competition that we're doing today is actually derived from that as well. And <sighs> I forget what this – I think we did this around Cortica, the Cortica Jug game in 2010. No, I think it was just in the early seasons or the early stages of the football season, to be perfectly it, honest. Something like that. Yeah. But we were we had the crazy idea to jump on the air and to do a food-eating competition between the two of us, but also bring on – no, it was during Cortica because we had Zach – Tominelli and Nate March, who were the play-by-play and color guys at the time, came on the show, and we were so thankful that they took time out of their busy weekend prepping for Cortica to come and do this for us. And so while you and I stuffed our faces, they did the play-by-play and color for us. I've got 500 bucks that says you're wrong and that I'm right with the timeline of this. Okay. Well, 500 we'll, we'll, bucks. We will refer to the YouTube video. You, you want to refer to the YouTube video? I will refer to the YouTube video. Should right. I find it right now? No, fair enough. No, I've got it pulled up right here. Let's see. Uh, Epic Food Face-Off, Countdown to the Weekend. It was uploaded. It's not giving me a date. Oh, I think published. it was like November 17th, 2010. It was uploaded. November 17th. But here's the thing. It definitely happened not in November. We wouldn't be dressed in like nice warm weather outfits this these videos clearly were published later but that is very much around the cortica jug timeline mid november i don't know zensky okay. i don't remember it what i did matter. two days ago it i just don't matter. know the fact is that 10 years later <sighs> we're bringing this back Why? we are bringing this back because it is we were trying to think about okay how do we kick off summer because Happy Memorial Day weekend to you wherever you may be celebrating. And we were like, okay, so how do we kick off the summer season? So we're like, okay, let's do barbecue foods. But like, how do we celebrate barbecue foods? Not like let's do barbecue foods. Like how do we celebrate barbecue foods? Exactly. So what you and I did is we tried to make this as fair of a comparison as possible. So we went to our local McDonald's. And each got two cheeseburgers and a medium fries, and then we made uh, hot two hot dogs on the side. So these are going to be happening in multiple rounds. So you got that. And then also at a barbecue, you got to have your chips and your beer. So that'll, that'll be another round in and of itself. And so you guys will get to enjoy the sights and sounds of Karski and I stuffing our faces while Matt McCarthy provides the wonderful commentary that he always does. Now, wait a second. We, we are doing three rounds, right? We're starting doing with like the hot rounds. dogs, then going to the burgers and fries, then going to the Doritos and beer, correct? Correct. Okay. Just wanted to be sure on this. What are you like? Getting like water inside of you? Like trying to get no, that, warmed that, that, up? And, like coffee. Oh, I thought it was like some sort of water that you were just trying no. to like digest and consume like the, you know, Ma, whatever Kobayashi guy or whatever, John, Joey, <laughs> Joey Chestnut, Chestnuts. you know, those guys, you know. <laughs> no, I don't have a fancy technique like that. I'm going to be oh, eating the hot dog straight, not 
dunking them in Coca Cola or water or the, whatever they do. Okay. okay. All right. But Good. but that's coming up in a little bit. But before we get to that, we got some headlines. Here's what you missed. All right. So the first one this week, uh, we talked a few weeks ago about how major league sporting events, uh, specifically baseball, was incentivizing fans and game goers for getting the vaccine. Right. And the Mets and the Yankees, I believe, blundered this because they gave the incentive of sitting in the upper decks for getting a vaccine. But Governor Cuomo of New York has one better. He says, hey, 12 to 17 year olds or adolescents is is the better term for them. Get your vaccine, get a free ride to college. I saw that actually. Yeah. I don't know enough about it, but I did see this. So it's based on research. Uh, it's it's a get a shot and make your future campaign that they introduced today. It says Cuomo says 12 to 17 year olds are the least likely to get vaccinated. And they also have the highest percentage of positivity. So basically what they're going to do is New York State will administer the random drawing and select 10 winners a week over five weeks for a total of 50 winners. The winners will receive up to four years of full-time undergrad study or five years in an approved five-year bachelor's degree program, which includes the following components. So it's tuition, non-tuition costs, and residence. And this is all done through SUNY or CUNY schools, um, obviously. But smart idea. If, 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 these, if that target audience isn't getting vaccinated... Hit them in the hit them in the in the wallet so they don't need to pay student loans. Well, the thing is, is <laughs> do a lot of these kids nowadays want to go to college? Because <laughs> they all want to be influencers and they all want to be TikTok stars and they all want to be on Instagram and all this other nonsense. Yes. So, I mean, I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer here, but I look at it from the perspective of, hey, some of these kids right now, I think, would rather do something else with their lives than go to college. But this should be an enticing way to to get them to want to get the COVID vaccine. But I feel like a lot of other places are doing things that are kind of similar like this. Like, you know, a whole lottery drawing. If you're, you're going to win a million dollars for, you know, if you're randomly selected and you have your COVID shot. You know, everybody is trying to implement these... Um, these these deals, these uh, specials, these grand prizes that you can win for for getting your vaccination. And I mean, if you got to do it, you got to do it. I mean, so be it. I mean, whatever is going to entice the people have at it, I guess. Yeah. And, and I mean, if if we're being honest, like it's sad that you need to incentivize people in the first place, if you're asking me. But that's another conversation in and of itself. But I think for what this is as an incentive structure to get people to get vaccinated, especially if they're going to be going to an environment where there's a lot of close contact and large groups of people, the, the college lifestyle makes sense. And yes, you bring up a fair point if, if or students or kids actually going to college nowadays. I don't know. We could talk about that another day, but I think for what this is as a as an incentive, it's a good one. Uh, have there been any incentives for adults? Like, what about me? I got my vaccine a while ago. Why didn't I get something? I just got a sticker. <laughs> well, again, in a I bag mean, if... that promoted the institute that delivered the shot into my right arm. That's I, all I, I got. The incentive, uh, enough if you ask me, is that you're protected from a deadly virus. Uh, I want some cash. I, of, of I course. I want some free but... tickets. Give me something good. Give me something. Again. Give me something flashy that's going to get my attention. <laughs> you're not wrong. It's the way humans work. But for me, I'm perfectly content with being protected from the disease. Uh, give me the goods. Give me the goods. Yeah. It's what I want. Greedy. Yeah. Um, you're greedy <laughs> just like Amazon. And uh, they're, yeah, well, I don't know if you heard about this today because it's news as of today, but they just acquired MGM Studios for $8.5 billion, $8.45 billion. Oh, yes. No, no, no. See, I'm not a big, go through the, the details and everything like that. So this is the second largest acquisition Amazon ever made uh, after the $13.7 billion acquisition they made for Whole Foods 
in 2017. And this was basically their way to bolster their Prime Video catalog. MGM Studios, it's obviously very historic. It has a catalog of 4,000 films and 17,000 TV shows, the likes of uh, which include James Bond, uh, The Big Sick, Manchester by the Sea, Wizard of Oz. Um, You also have some newer titles on there that includes, I believe, The Handmaid's Tale and Fargo. Um, And I didn't know this, but in terms of TV shows, they have Shark Tank, Survivor, and The Real Housewives. So Amazon, like all the big corporations now, are trying to bolster what they could offer consumers from a content level. And this is their way to do do that because MGM is kind of the last studio on the block, uh, per se, in Hollywood that hasn't been bought up by a larger entity or company. And uh, they're they're bolstering their streaming service game. Now, see, that just seems so sad to me because it just again, I'm not a big movie person, so I can't speak on on what this deal may or may not mean for the industry and everything. But when it's going to place like Amazon, like I understand they have Prime and they have all the good content that's been going on throughout their their catalog of of, of movies and, and TV shows and et cetera, et cetera. But at the same time it just feels uncomfortable it just it feels like amazon's controlling everything at this point and i know i understand if you if you got the money to do so so be it you got the money to do so do whatever the hell you want i can't stop you but it just doesn't feel right you're not wrong by saying that and and even after the news broke today you had uh, congressional um representatives uh, already flagging like antitrust oh yeah you know concerns over this so they're gonna look into it like they do with everything and I mean and to be frank this is not a large merger in the context of mergers that have happened recently like I mean Disney bought Fox and many of its entities for significantly more than 8.545 billion it was tens of billions was it really it was yeah I forget how much it was but it was uh it was a lot, a lot of coin. The only nice thing that seems that came out of out of that deal was the fact that I can watch The Simpsons now on Disney Plus. Seventy one billion dollars. Oh, God almighty. Oh, and they pretty much bought everything up except except Fox Sports and Fox News. As to not compete with ABC and ESPN. I just can't even, man. Like, I, it's, it's wild. It's it's a wild wild world out there yeah holy mother so leap yeah Jeez. so so in the near future when you are on prime video uh you will likely be seeing some of these uh beloved uh mgm titles uh on your on your feed there which will be nice it'll be convenient it'll be very enjoyable but it still feels like they did something dirty to me fair um, but speaking of feed, but in a different context, uh, it's time for us to feed ourselves because I don't serious? know about you, but I, I haven't had dinner yet. Um, and so this will be quite, why the dinner. would you have dinner before doing anything like this? Like what, that's would what com- I'm saying. I, I didn't have dinner. What would compel you to even consider having dinner at this point when this is about to uh, like happen? I don't, I'm saying, that's why I'm telling you, I didn't have dinner, but, um, to, to guide us in this conversation and to make fun of us while we stuff our faces with uh, barbecue food, we're joined by the incomparable, the one and only Matthew McCarthy of 98.5 The Sports Hub in Boston. Sir, it is good to see you again. You know what? I was thinking, guys, I've seen you eat some really, really (laughs) awful food. Like you go back to our days in college. Thank you. Papa John's Pizza on Saturday for Bombers football. If you can put that down, you can put anything down and not feel the ill effects. Now, granted, we're 10 years on from that. So I don't know if we reach a point where it's like your stomach was iron 10 years ago from you know Papa John's Pizza on Saturdays for Bombers football. I don't know like at what point you lose that like immunity, you know, and kind of that buildup. We're about to find out. We're about to find out, McCarthy. This is terrifying. You you have no idea how much I'm dreading this whole thing and how much I've been dreading this thing like all day long. It's been 
terrifying to me. Yeah, you were oddly nervous, and and I feel like you don't get nervous over stuff like this. I do. No, but because why? I don't know. There's going to be all of this crap just shoved in my face, and then it's going to go down into my system, and then who knows what the hell is going to happen tomorrow? Like I've got a full day of trying to like live life and trying to survive and in work and everything that comes with it, and yet I'm hoping to God that I just even wake up in the morning. Yeah, we've uh, all reached that point. Again, this is not, we are not true. juniors and seniors in college no, anymore. You're, like, you're guys, wrong. I just had a big birthday. I'm like starting to rethink everything. Like, I don't think I can eat that anymore. I, I, I know I can't drink the way I used to. Trust me, I felt it Monday morning. I was like, man, I stopped drinking at five in the afternoon yesterday. I still feel like crap. So, yeah, it, it changes fast. So, we're, this is going to be a, this is going to be a test, boys. It's going to be a big time test. It is. It is. Well, and happy belated to you, by the way. Hopefully you had a good birthday. It was delightful. Thank you very much. Yes, happy belated, it. McCarthy. I'm a terrible person for, I, man, I just, you know, life gets in Jeez. the way. Life gets in the way. Let me Nick, tell you. Well, you have the only good going on. It's all good. And trust me, I was day drinking early and I didn't under, <laughs> I didn't see many of those decks. I was at a <laughs> golf course, boys. I don't know how I shot my best round ever because the final five holes were a disaster. Because you shot your best round ever because you were drinking alcohol while cons- while playing at a golf course, McCarthy. That's what happens to me anytime I have a couple of brews or something else. Uh, I'm telling you, I swear, I shoot so much better at a golf course, like infinitely better. Like we're talking about four, five, six beers deep. Forget about it. My mental state, it's awesome. My golf game, even better. <laughs> Well, that's the thing, but it's a fine line, and I hit that fine line for like a good five, six holes. I'm like, I'm feeling good. I'm not caring about this. I'm not getting up to the ball and realizing like, oh, God, I don't know how to play this game. This is going to be awful. I'm going to shank this thing so far to the right. No, I wasn't thinking that. And then by about the 13th or 14th hole, I was just like, I'm too drunk for this. (laughs) (laughs) So what you're saying is that we should have done this drunk. Oh, yeah. No, it would make everything better. It would make tomorrow yeah. worse, but it would make tonight. Boys, it's about the content. You guys were some of the first people who taught me that. It's all about the content, baby. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. In, 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 in the, the hallowed halls of the park school a decade ago. That's right. Our infinite wisdom. <laughs> it's, where it's, all, it's where it's all formed, where it all goes, it's where it's all goes back to. <laughs> where it all goes downhill well, from here. Should, should we revisit those days? Because I am having flashbacks of, of Nate March and Zach Tominelli talking us through. So, okay, so here's the thing. We need to set the stage for what happened 10 years ago. And so that was, it was chicken wings, it was donuts, it was saltine crackers, and it was orange soda. Is that right, Nick? If I'm not mistaken, I think that was a yes. So we did four yes. rounds of that. We paired it back around this time, but again... We have, we're going to do the first round of two hot dogs, the second round of two ham, uh, cheeseburgers and french fries, and, this, and the third round of a bag of Doritos and a beer. So we'll see how this why goes. I'm freaking the hell out, McCarthy? Like, this is insane. Yeah, I don't know why you're doing this to yourself, but again, it's all about the content. <laughs> That's it's very true. I, Thank I, 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 Thank I will say, he was on the fence for this, and, and I kind of made the decision that we're doing this, and here we are. No, I like it. That's, that's how it's done. So you know, we, go along with this, Karski. Pay the price tomorrow, but people are going to remember this. Should we get into it? Say a prayer. I think we should. Oh All right. So here's what's going to happen. So yeah, the first one to, to finish happen? the first one to finish each round wins, and this is going to be a best of three. Stupid. This is stupid. so this is we're going to start off with with the hot dogs. And Matt, I don't know if you have your Zoom set up in a way where you could see both of us at the same time. I do. Okay, cool. So you're just going to do your wonderful commentary and and tell the listeners. Poor how McCarthy. I feel terrible for McCarthy. We're bringing him on. Usually, we're talking about baseball. We're talking about like the Hall of Fame. We're talking about anything and everything worthwhile. And here we are saying, "Hey, do by, do play by play as we stuff our faces with food." Like, give me a break. Well, Nick, I feel like I owe it to you because you were the per- first person who ever put me on play by play ten and a half years ago. It was Bombers football. <laughs> So, like, if you threw me on then, like, you got to throw me on now. I showed up, I, like, quick story before you start. I show up, you said you got to dress up for it. I didn't have a tie or anything. I went down, I bought a zip tie from the Walmart in Ithaca, and I tried to cut it open, and I cut the tie you in cut half. cut the tie. I cut the tie in half. Now, I'm a poor college student. The last thing I'm going to do 
the last thing I'm going to do is go out and buy a new tie. I spent like $8 on this tie. I, that was my $8 for the week. So what did I do? Had a couple rubber bands, put it together, showed up looking like a complete and total schlub. Oh so God. I owe you one, Karski. Okay, McCarthy. Brought- that's fair enough. That's fair that's enough. That's fantastic. That's a great story. Fair enough. God almighty. All right. This is terrifying. Well, I wish we, we I wish we had the okay, I'm gonna be perfectly honest. This is the beauty of doing this stuff and in recording this stuff. I wish we had music that I was going to be playing now rather than putting it in post because <laughs> I'm afraid of what McCarthy's about to hear. <laughs> like I'm afraid of the damage we're about to do to his eardrums. Yeah. Let's do You're not wrong. Let's hit the guy said it itself. Let, let, let's let's do the thing. Now, did you put anything on your hot dogs, by the way? I'm not a condiment guy. No, I'm going plain Jane here. I put some mustard on mine. I feel like that's a okay. disadvantage. Well, no, maybe it's an advantage for me. I don't know. But here's the thing. Now I'm going to try and get my confidence level up. Oh, boy. No, I can't. Right when we're starting, you're going to try that. I'm trying. Great tactic. I'm trying really hard right now. Oh, boy. All right. McCarthy, count us down. First one to finish two hot dogs takes round one. All right. Here we go, boys, in three two, one. Andrew Berezinski looking extraordinarily confident right now as he starts to down this hot dog. Oh Nick Karski shaking like a reliever, uh, coming into a high leverage situation, and a reliever that you don't have any faith in. He does not look good immediately nope. starting this thing off. No, he's already shaking his head. This is not good for Karski. Berezinski confidently downing that hot dog right there, nodding his head in approval. He feels good about this. We do see the form here between Andy B and and Karski, very similar. They're not doing the dunking approach, which you would see at the uh, Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest. They're just stuffing this thing in like you wouldn't believe. And I'll tell you what, folks, you do not want to choke to death on a hot dog. I did have a, a, (laughs) as I try to get Karski to choke to death on a hot dog. We we do, we do, there are medical professionals uh, on site, uh, we hope, or just, uh, you know. My fiance is a doctor, I mean. You're in good shape, Therapist, Andy. So. Andy B. pursuing pursuing this uh, with uh, with reckless abandon. Uh, hopefully, his his lovely bride is uh, in attendance. Should the Heimlich maneuver need to be uh, need to be administered, I will admit I do not know the Heimlich maneuver. Not a very good idea. Not a very good idea at all. We There's are, only so much you could do from where you are, by the way. No, they're really. I'm just going to watch you both die live on Zoom. <laughs> How about that? going to be dramatic and terrifying and traumatic pounding that hot dog is he done let's see Mm -mm, mm -mm. no Mm -hmm. the sound effects extraordinary i mean you you want to compare this to like an nfl game with the parabolic mics the sound effects of these guys just pounding these hot dogs absolutely gross and disgusting all at the same time andy b he has tapped at he, we have a winner here. Andy B. With the two hot dogs. Wow. Done. Karski, close, but no cigar. Wow. And the look of devastation on his face. Wow. Oh, I man. still have some in my mouth. <laughs> How the hell so- did you do that? Listen, man, whatever I may have won that round, I lost in dignity, all right? So. You lost in dignity. I saw how far... I had you were <laughs> that I had to shove three quarters of a hot dog in my mouth and then I couldn't even like chew it. Like there was so much in there. I genuinely couldn't even like chew the damn thing. So maybe the tactic is not to watch me leave you in the dust. Oh, Jesus Christ almighty. And I would say also Karski, you know, attempting to converse during this, probably not a great idea. Oh, that was a bad idea. That was a bad idea. <laughs> the a whole reliever idea. comment throw me for a loop i was just starting to think of some of the yankee relievers in the past who have just completely bombarded you know the the art of terribleness that that uh oh my gosh i can't even like oh. contain myself right now do you know what would make this even oh better my god no we, nothing we, would because people are naturally going to love this and we're going to have to bring it back at some point so at that point what we do is we infuse our trivia aspect into this so matt mccarthy throws us trivia Great, questions thanks. While we're trying to eat food. I mean, it only makes sense, right? Again, we are approaching a level of danger that I think we all should be kind <laughs> of uncomfortable with. But again, I mean, Karski does, you know, his fiance is a doctor, a medical professional. Uh, I'm sure Becca, you know, can administer the Heimlich maneuver. But we are approaching a level of danger here that I feel like we should steer clear from. Yeah. F- fair. Yeah. Fair. 
It would make for some views, though, if one of us just started choking on how the hell did on I the show. That? How the hell did I? I don't know. Do that? I'm feeling I'm feeling some to- sort of way. Right You're now. feeling some sort of way. This is your idea. You're the one that wanted to go back ten years ago <laughs> and make this happen here in 2021. Why not? This is fun. It's, Matt's getting a kick out of this, I'm sure. I'm losing. This is not fun. I'm also a sore loser, in case you guys didn't know. Like, a very nope. sore loser. Like Must be why we're not doing trivia on the program again oh, tonight. Jesus Christ. Oh, oh, oh. Man. God almighty, that was ruthless, but so good. That God, was I'm so proud that of was you for good. that one. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. All right, when do we start this next one? Whenever you feel comfortable, my friend. I, I can do it whenever. I mean, those hot dogs okay. haven't quite settled yet. They're going to settle in at some point, and it's going to be totally painful. Ooh. So I don't know if Excuse we just me. get it done and over with right now or what. You, you want to say let's go for it? I say you embrace the pain. All right, let's embrace the pain. So, so I mean, this, you know, it could be your Willis Reed moment. <laughs> <laughs> so here we have the medium French fries and the, and the two cheeseburgers from McDonald's. Embodying you the, the Memorial Day. Day. Two really? cheeseburgers after two hot dogs. And I said some one, fries. and you said two. Because I didn't think we were going to be going to this extreme, but here we are now, aren't we? <laughs> here we are. I mean, if you want to do one, we can, and we could just leave. Nope. The- we both okay. bought two. We've got to go for two now. All right. Are you ready? Again, that's the Matt McCarthy approach. When you buy something, even if you cut it in half, you just rubber band that thing together, remember? <laughs> Well said, McCarthy. <laughs> well you bought said. those two cheeseburgers. You can, they're star, they're starving children in Cambodia right now. You better oh eat those God. cheeseburgers. Oh, God. What would they think? What would they think? Fair point. Well, on that note, count us down. I think I've got a strategy. Okay. All right. We'll see if Karski's strategy is good in three, two, one. Second round underway, Andy B. A quick dive into that uh, that cheeseburger right there. I feel like the cheeseburger is going to go down a little bit easier than the hot dog. One necessarily wouldn't think that, but McDonald's cheeseburgers, relatively easy to put down. I would know. Karski confidently approaching this, not sweating buckets like the last time. We'll see if the meat sweats kick in for both of uh, Karski and Andy B. here momentarily. Andy B. trying to eat this thing a little bit uh, fast. Karski, a more methodical effort here. We'll see how the French fries get mixed in, whether they go to the French fries in between the cheeseburger or if they you know, go double cheeseburger, then the French fries. Just stuff that French fry thing right in your face. We'll see. Both men have finished both of their cheeseburgers right now, it appears. Andy B., it looks like he's going to guess. He is. He is going to go the double cheeseburger route. Karski, unclear what he's going to do <laughs> yet. He's deciding. Clearly no game plan entering this. He's going the French fries. Nick Karski has gone with the French fries in a dramatic uh, move that one would say doesn't necessarily follow the normal etiquette of this. But Karski going the French fries. Andy B now so feeling the soggy. pressure, starting to put some French fries in himself. Oh my God, these are so soggy. How old are they? Oh. Don't answer that. Compete. Andy B going back to the burger now. Maybe un, uh, unhappy with what uh, his initial approach was, downing the first cheeseburger, starting to think more about those French fries. Karski confidently pounding away French fries. God, this is a disgusting, disgusting sight. <laughs> it really is. If only you people could see this now, it is horrible. It's one of the most horrible things I've seen. And I watched my bro- brother's apartment building burn down this week. This is more horrible than that. Let me tell you what, folks. Good Lord. You went there. Who f- there? My God. Oh my God. Listen to these men chew. What a horrible, horrible sound. <laughs> now I have guilt on top of what we're doing. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> He's all no, right. No, it's not okay. He's all right. He's at, he got out with the dog. His girlfriend's fine. Everything's good. <laughs> See, it's so I hard to feel the need to address my this by jaw care. hurts. My jaw hurts so bad. See, I'm unclear where Karski is on the cheeseburger right now. That's the real question. Andy B has crushed the majority, if not all, of that cheeseburger. Just a little ways to go on the cheeseburger. Karski hiding it. It's strategic, really. So Andy B does not see how much... I think Karski is done. I think he's done with the french fries. Now he's going for the cheeseburger, one would think. Pain on his face. (sighs) But still an air of confidence that we did not see in the first round from Karski. Andy B now putting away French fries. We could be close to a victory. Oh. Hmm. The sounds of pain. 
emanating from Andy B. Oh, the soft French fry. Karski approaching the end of that cheeseburger. It appears to be a cheeseburger versus French fry race right now. This is what the fans were hoping for. Oh my god. Duh. What more can you say about this horrible, horrible sight? More Zinsky's French fries idea. to go for Andy B. Zinsky's idea. Oh my god, are you almost done? He's approaching the end, it appears, with, with a, a level of confidence. Uh-oh, that's the look of defeat on Karski's face. It's not good. This is not a good sign. Oh, you animal. Animal, Andy B. 2-0, Andy B. We have a winner. How the hell Andy did you do that? has completed the two cheeseburger french fry thing in, I swear to God, four minutes or less. <laughs> How the hell did you do that? I'm not try even not to, feeling in pain right now. I I'm trying not feel, to choke. How like how did you scarf all that down? Oh god, is he gonna vomit? No, no, I'm good. I mean, well, ask me later. Just do it now. God, see what happens. I don't know, man. Ask me later. Mm, mm. Well, if he vomits now, he gets disqualified. Let's be real here. That's the point. That's what I'm hoping That's for. Very true. <laughs> Zensky, you look like you're oh, in significantly so more pain than I am in right now. No, I'm actually not. I, it was just like there was a, a decent amount like kind of stuck up here. And so I just didn't know what way it was going to go. My yeah. problem is I can't chew fast enough. <laughs> my, <laughs> I, can't I probably shouldn't be able to jaw. chew that fast. In, in fairness, I just, I don't know. I, I'm i ashamed of myself. McCarthy, I'm yeah, so you sorry you had to deal with this today. <laughs> no, no, it's, again, it's okay. It's only the most horrible thing I've witnessed this week. It's all good. Thank but down, come, down the dude, guzzle come of on. <laughs> Come on, you're, oh, that is just awful. Actually awful. He's joking about it, too. It's all good. Oh, Jesus. I wouldn't be. God, God, thank God they're okay. Oh, me too. I know. Absolutely wild. And the generosity, it's just, it's crazy. It really is. Where can so. people go to help? Seriously, I'm dead serious. Uh, I, I've i got the GoFundMe page. Let me uh, look at that up right now. It is Eric, Kelly, and Charlie recover from Revere Apartment Fire on GoFundMe. GoFundMe.com. Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll include that link in the show notes. And if you can, please uh, please think of donating. That'll be yeah. awesome. Jesus. McCartney, yeah, they're okay, imagine. which is all that matters. Yeah, that's seriously so important. So yes. important. And here you are just like making a joke about it on the podcast. I can't yeah. Believe, I can't believe it. Yeah. That says a lot about your character. Oh, you went stop through that it. crap this week. No, character. it does. You went through that kind of garbage and crap this week and he's still here going through this nonsense with yeah, us. Yeah, that's true. That's true. We always well, listen, everything everything in life is in perspective, right? I mean, they're here, they're safe. You can either mope about it or joke about it. Man, you know, and that's yeah. that's their approach. That's our approach. Uh, you know, they're OK. They're fine. That's all that matters. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, we were joking out on the golf course this weekend when he bought me a drink. I said, man, I've really reached a new low, you know, getting a you know, having a homeless man buy me a drink. Man. <laughs> wow. Oh, I love you. You're the best, man. You're the best. You're the absolute you are, best. You are a champ. You really we still are. have one more round to go, though. Right. This is the beer and Cheetos. Is that correct? Beer and Doritos. Oh, you sick bastard. <laughs> really? I know. What are you trying to do? Now, what do we have? We have like a light beer. Are we going something more IPA, like heavy, like that? Because that would be a, a mistake. No. So, Nick, you have a Labatt, right? I got a blue. I got myself oh. a blue. Which, and, and, which is probably oh, a little on. bit heavier than whatever Zensky's got. Can, can no, I, I actually can I just say. I'm sorry. Go go ahead, Zensk. No, I, I was going to say, in fairness, I, I tried to find a com comparable Pilsner. So this is just the Trader Joe's Pilsner that I had in the Trader fridge. Trader Joe's Pilsner? What are we, pinky up in this joint or something like I was, that? I wasn't going to get a, a 
something completely off from what you're drinking. It wasn't going to get a lager when you're drinking a Pilsner or an IPA when a you're drinking Trader a Pilsner. Trader Joe's beer. I didn't even realize they made beer at Trader Joe's. Have you ever been to Trader Joe's? No. A huge alcohol section. What is, you haven't been to Trader Joe's before? No, but regardless. Get out I, of here with that. All right, fine. See you later. I'm done. <laughs> you win the competition. I don't do, care. Do they, do they have Trader Joe's in, El, in the Elmira region? Of course, of course not, York? but there's one in Ithaca now. So I was going to say, one just opened in Ithaca, it, right? So everybody's been losing their collective minds about this Trader Joe's that's in Ithaca, New York, thinking it's the greatest, most almighty thing in the history of mankind. Well, let's be real. The clientele in Ithaca, New York, would think that the Trader Joe's is the greatest, <laughs> most almighty thing of all time. That's true. Now, no, you're not we wrong. Here, you know, we just got Wegmans recently, so, I mean, it's a big deal oh. for us. How Wait, close, even by like, you, how, you just got a Wegmans? No, not by not by me. There, There's none There's none in, in my general area, but I'm hoping eventually. As I'm moving oh. out towards Andy B., I'm right, hoping right. there's going to be a Wegmans out there eventually. And so then the one closest to you will probably be the one closest to me in, uh, in Westwood. Yes, yeah, yeah, I've been to that one. It's like a castle. Oh, yeah. Talk about an alcohol section in that one. If you're ever in Massachusetts, go to the the Wegmans liquor st- <laughs> wine shop in Westwood. Jeez. That See, crazy, here's, huh? here's the thing Karski needs to understand with the Wegmans is that when Wegmans came in here, you know, Wegmans is just the normal supermarket, you know, in New York and places right. like that. When it came in here, it basically branded itself as like the fancy supermarket where they have everything and it's like a shopping experience. Whereas everywhere else, it's just your supermarket down the street. Wegmans here, they built these like McMansion, these castle supermarkets. It's unbelievable. I remember I went to one in the Syracuse area and it was one of the newer ones and it literally looked so majestic. And they had like actual <laughs> restaurants in there, and like I, not to say like a, bur- a burger bar, like it wasn't just a normal burger bar, like it was a sit down burger bar, like super fancy burgers you can get. Like it was absurd, it was ridiculous. That's the Wegmans here. Like that's yeah. every Crazy. Wegmans here. There isn't like a normal Wegmans here. It's like oh, they're they're all of that quality for yes. sure. I remember stepping into the one in Ithaca for the first time and never having experienced a supermarket like that before in my life. Mm-hmm. With like oh, you could actually get like sushi here and 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 good subs and a place to sit down and eat it and like a a good ice cream and coffee section like sign me up oh the greatest the greatest experience ever particularly as you know a college student you get one you know one-stop shopping for everything yeah so you can you can you know it's not trader joe's where you can get you know andy b's pilsner or whatever he's got and by the (laughs) way karski being you know the the upstate new yorker the central new yorker the western new yorker that he is wherever we define elmira to be i would say uh southern tier southern tier Uh, nothing more appropriate than like a labat (laughs) or a molson right there because it's basically canada of course (laughs) The only thing more appropriate would be like a Utica Club or something. <laughs> That's well, I don't know because I do have a, a soft spot for Labatt Blue, and I think they are an official sponsor of the Buffalo Bills. And I am weird like that, where I will sometimes take that <clears throat> into consideration when it comes to what kind of products and uh, what c- where my uh, where my money goes to. Well, Karski, you're about to be the Buffalo Bills of 2000 to 2020 if you Thank don't you. represent yourself a little bit better here in the final round. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Much appreciated. Much this appreciated. Is, this, this has been a J.P. Lossman level level performance yeah, from Karski. Yeah. He's been a freaking dumpster fire. Like, my jaw, like, I seriously can't chew nearly as fast as I thought I used to be able to chew food. I don't know what the hell's wrong with me. Should we get to the last final in, like, the, the, the finale of all of this, Enski? Yeah, you ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So we got the the Pilsner and the Doritos. Oh, we're not talking about it like a little snack pack of Doritos that you get. Like, no, we're talking about the Big Mama. Like, you know. <laughs> well, to be fair though, I think this is the snack pack that you get now. Yeah, it's it's the snack pack that you get now. Yeah, the per package, four hundred and ten calories. Total fat is twenty seven percent. Sodium is at twenty five percent. You don't want to read that before you do this. A horrible no. decision. Another bad decision by Karski. <laughs> God. What you're are you doing wrong. yourself, man? I know. What you, the hell? You don't read the doing? package before you pound the full bag of Doritos. That's Everybody fine. knows I don't, that. You know, I can't Rookie mistake. I can't think. I, I got this. I got this. This is the one I get. This is the one I got. All right. Are we ready? I think I think we're I Let's mean, I it. can't speak for you. I know I'm ready. Let's do I'm it. ready. Let's do it. Here we go in three, two, one. Big time strategy has to be decided here. Are you going to go with the beer first, Karski? Going with 
the beer. He's going with the beer. He's going to chug that thing like you wouldn't believe. He's still got it. The man still has it. I think he did it in one, in one sip there. One, uh, no problems at all. Now he goes for the bag of Doritos. Zen's well, he's going for the Doritos first. He has not gone for the beer. Will he be able to chug it the way he used to 10 years ago? We're going to find out. This is the dramatic moment of the night. It's like the ninth inning. You've got the best hitter in the league at the plate against the best closer. This is where we're at. We're going to find out. This is not cutting time. Ultimately, that's what it is. This is when it matters most. We're going to see if these guys still have it. 10 years later, can they pound the beer? Can they pound the Doritos? This is college all over again. This is college 101. Really, this goes back to this goes back to the basics. This is what it's all about. They always say the greatest performers on earth. It's all about the fundamentals. No, Karski did not pound the Labatt Blue the whole way through. A disappointing performance. What has happened to you, man? This is like watching you know one of the greats on the on his last legs, unable to unable to pound the Labatt Blue in one full chug. Extraordinarily disappointing. I'm not even watching Andy B. I'm just watching Karski choke this thing away. I'm sure Andy B's doing much better. He could probably pound it in one sitting. Karski, no, not at all. The crunch, the crunch of the Doritos. You can feel the drama building here. Who wouldn't want this? Karski, with a, a kind of a stern yet determined look on his face. Zensky feeling the pain just a little bit. He's gonna feel the pain later on in a significant way. This is where the doubt starts to creep into these performers' heads. Karski nods, his eyes watering in pain. The meat sweat starting to kick in from the cheeseburgers, the hot dogs. The question is, will the mustard, did it help? Did it not help? We'll never know. It's like the chicken and the egg. We'll never get the answer. A few oh, more man. chips to go, it looks like, for both of them. The question is, how much beer remains? We have not seen Zensky pound much of that beer. Was he sneaky with it? We'll find out. More Labatt goes, black, goes back for Karski. Just a sip now. The question is, was it his final sip, or does he have more? More. He has more. God, what a disappointing performance. The crunch, crunch, crunch of failure going on right now. That is the sound of disappointment. Zensky and Karski now with a little bit more pep in their step. You can tell they're approaching the end. They can feel good. Karski readjusting the headphones. He's put the Doritos down. Zensky now pounding the end of that Dorito. Karski trying to pound the end of this beer. This is going to be a close. It's going to be a photo finish. Zensky still trying to get those final crumbs out. Maybe he's just still hungry. We don't know. Oh, he's got so much beer left. Karski has to be in the lead at this point. This is amazing. Is he going to be able to pound that full beer before Karski gets his final sips of that god-awful Labatt Blue? Who knows? Zensky pounding, pounding, pounding. There it goes. Down the muzzle. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, he, oh, he finishes. No, no, oh, no, no, he no, finishes. No, 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 no. I, I hit my can on the, the desk. It's a photo it just, finish. It was more dramatic to watch Zensky pound the whole thing. But I think you're right, Karski. I did hear the clank. You were done. You win this round just barely. Although Zensky, I thought with a much significantly better approach in the close, trying to pound that full beer there at the end. Good God. You don't want, you don't want your stomach filled up with beer, right? <clears throat> oh, so I was close. trying to go with a Kobayashi sort of like uh, maneuver where I was, I was trying to like drink half the beer and then use the rest of it to wash away the Doritos. Oh. How you feeling? I, mean, you think I actually, do... I'm, I'm feeling terrible, but I'm not feeling as bad as I thought I would. I think it goes to show you that maybe you still have it just a little bit. Maybe it's not oh. 10 years ago, but Let's you still have it. Let's go, baby. Nicely done. Hey, nicely done by you. <sighs> I'll give you a little bit of credit for something, even though I'm a sore loser. I appreciate that. Like that's, really... that's coming a long way from you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, McCarthy, wait. I can't believe you had to sit oh, through all of that. I'm so sorry. Oh, my God. I can't believe you had to sit through all of this. Are you kidding me? If there's one thing I love watching, it's other people experience pain. And that was just like 30 <laughs> minutes of, exper of you guys experiencing some horrible self-inflicted pain. It's, it, was, it was kind of fascinating to yeah. watch, I must say. Yeah. And the strategy. I love the strategy. Who had the good strategy? Who had the bad strategy? There was you see, now I'm peeved, though, because it's not like I lost by a lot. I lost by that much. Yeah. 
just a hair. Yeah, you know, it was it was the second <clears throat> the second tilt back of the Dorito bag that cost you. It did. <laughs> Why well, are, are we be, so? Did did you get like every crumb out of the bag? Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, come on. See, look, there is nothing in this. Unbelievable. Oh. Are you kidding me? Did you hear that sound? We have a disqualification. I got, I got, look, this is what I have left in the bag right here. If you could see that. That is it. Oh, that's like what I had. BS, that's what you had. You had big pieces in there. Did you hear that sound? You don't crunch like that with little, and you're still going. What is that? It's, it's little tiny pieces. That's Get just out like of you here had. with that. Unbelievable. You know, Andy B. He tried to pull you one over on you. <laughs> oh my god! Clearly, not at his all. His own best man. Not at all. Wow. Wow. God no. Oh God no. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. It. Excuse yeah, I'm me. I'm starting to feel it. Holy hell! We're both like collapsing and dying at the same exact moment here. Oh, well, that was an experience. Probably a good way to describe it. <laughs> McCarthy, oh, my God. I, you're the in, in fairness, best dude for doing this. You are. You are a, a gentleman, a scholar, other things that go into that category. You're just a good friend. So we appreciate you being on the show as always. Oh, guys, you kidding me? I love coming on. Anytime this was a blast, you come up with the most creative things. We always have fun. Um you probably won't have fun in an hour, but you'll have fun now. This was this was fun. We will we will certainly try, and um, I think the next time we have you on, we'll go back to our regularly regularly scheduled um, baseball programming. Uh, since there, I'm sure there'll be talk lot lots to talk about later on in the season here. But just a housekeeping note before we wrap things up: this will be the last show until June 18th. They're taking a little bit of an early summer hiatus, but we will be back with new shows. Zensky's going on vacation. Enjoy. That I am, and Lucky I will report duck. back with hopefully some screams and drinking around the world, but we'll see. But until then, Matt, thank you so much, buddy. We really appreciate You're you the coming best, on dude. as always. Oh, you guys are the best. Love coming on with you. Anytime. Seriously, anytime. Thank you, man. Hey, Zensky. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you stay classy, my friend. <laughs> you stay classy. See ya. Peace. Peace.